Completing the square is the expression used to describe the process of, of changing an expression like this called standard form into the completed square form. It's, it's easy to get from the completed square form back to here. All you have to do is expand the binomial, subtract the 2, and you're back to this. But completing the square takes a little bit more work. Now, here's an example, and what I always do with these is I write down the first two terms, and I move the last term out of the way, and the process goes like this. Take half of the 10, which is 5, Square the 5, 5 squared is 25, and you add 25, and you subtract 25. That means there's no change, it's still equal to what we had up here. However, the reason for doing that is so that we can take the first three terms and write them as a perfect square. When I described in the uh, videos about uh, factoring, we talked about the, when the last sign is plus, both signs are identical. In this case, both of the brackets have a plus 5 in them, so we write it as x plus 5 squared. And the two terms on the end give us negative 22. Here's another example. Again, write down the first two terms, move the 7 out of the way, take half of the negative 8, which is negative 4, Square negative 4, you get 16. Add the 16 and subtract the 16. That gives us a perfect square. That perfect square can be written like this. x minus 4. The number in here is always half of the negative 8 in this case. And the negative 16 plus the 7 gives us negative 9 on the end. Now it gets a little more complicated if there's a number in front of the x squared. That number has to be factored out of the first two terms. So if I factor the 3 out, I've got x squared minus 8x. Now leave some room inside the bracket. Move the 7 over here to get it out of the way. Just like in the last question, half of negative 8 is negative 4. When you square that you get 16. Add the 16 and subtract the 16. Once again, the first three terms are a perfect square. And we can write x minus 4 in brackets squared. Now there was a 3 in front. Since I'm not going to write the square brackets anymore, I'm bringing the 3 back in. The 3 will go in front of the x minus 4 squared. This was sitting here all by itself, so the 3 comes in, multiplies the negative 16, gives us negative 48, plus 7, and we'll just simplify that last line, x minus 4 squared, minus 41. One more example. If there's a negative in front of the x squared, it's just as much a problem as a having a number like we had the 3 in the last example. I have to factor out that negative sign. If I factor the negative out, I get x squared minus 12x. Again, leave lots of room in the square bracket. Put the plus 5 on the end. Half of negative 12 is negative 6. If you square negative 6, you get 36. So you add and subtract 36. Once again, the three terms that I've underlined there can be written as a perfect square. x minus 6, which is half of the negative 12. Now this time there was a negative in front, so that negative now comes back into the bracket, so it puts a negative in front of this term, it also comes in and it changes the negative 36 to positive 36. Now we bring the 5 back into our operation here and we've got x minus 6 squared plus 41.